All right, we're live and we're ready for another unbridled Living in Costa Rica podcast where you get the good, the bad, and the ugly about Costa Rica. But I'm willing to bet if you're prepared, you get all of the facts. No doubt, we know from experience that since you're prepared, you know what to expect, you're going to easily be able to find your slice of paradise in Costa Rica. And when any of those things do happen, you're prepared so that it doesn't cause you problems. But hey, today, what are we talking about? Today, we're going to be looking at, is it still easy or a viable way to make money if you decide you want to have an Airbnb? to make money in Costa Rica. So we're going to look at the pros and cons of all that. And not only that, but hey, we're going to be talking about the different types of Airbnbs and which type of Airbnb is the easiest one to manage. And in my opinion, is the one that makes the most money or easiest to, to manage. What kind of investment do you need to have to get started? Uh, and give you a hint, it's not a lot. Okay. And how can you stand out from the crowd so that you can actually make money? And we're, lastly, we're going to review the Airbnb I stayed in last week so that we can show you how easily it would be because this was a good Airbnb. It wasn't the normal Tico owned Airbnb, but with just a few tweaks could turn this one into a gold mine. So we're going to be talking about that. But hey, if this is your first time here, I'm Alan. This is my co-host, Rebecca. And we've been here over 10 years, lived in over 25 different places and locations. And so look, if you're looking for answers, can't seem to find them, you can easily schedule your free phone consultation. We'll be more than glad to talk to you, give you the answers that you need now about living in Costa Rica. But before we get started, what's been happening on the off-grid homestead? <laughs> well, you were gone all week. That's right. I was gone all week at an Airbnb because I was uh, helping out a client on a piece of property he had. So we didn't get anything done on the off-grid homestead. Right. So I just worked and s Skyped with you and uh, in the evenings. and. So Rebecca did her own thing. And, you know, really, you know, she says she does all this work, but we everybody knows when the cat is away, the mouse goes play. So I don't know how much playing she did. What do you think I have to go play? <laughs> well, you got all this jungle, the monkeys, the forest, the waterfalls, right? All right. <laughs> all right. Hey, welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Give me a big old shout out. Let us know where you're watching from, okay? And look, put in your questions that you might have about the Airbnb, okay? So, hey, let's just jump right into this topic, okay? So, uh, let's, you know... Some people will say, you know, I don't know, an Airbnb, it's a lot of work. So let's address some of the cons about Airbnbs, okay? Number one, it's a lot of work. Well, I guess it all depends on who you are. The most important thing is, hey, in Costa Rica, let's just say you don't want to do all the work. Well, you don't have to. Or maybe you're disabled in some way and you're not able to do that physical work. In Costa Rica, labor is cheap. So you can literally hire a maid to come clean every time someone checks out an Airbnb. In most cases, depending on the type of Airbnb you have, it'll take an hour, maybe two hours max. And look, 1,500 kilometers, that's three bucks. So what? Three bucks an hour, you can hire someone to clean that Airbnb so it's ready to go again, all right? So, hey, you don't have to do the work. And today with technology, really, uh, with today's technology, you can work smarter and not harder, okay? And I'm going to go into that in a minute. So some people complain, well, yeah, but you know, you got to wait on the people. And so you're waiting for them to show up and they sent you a message saying they're going to be there at 12 o'clock and it's one o'clock before they show up. And then it's like, well, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you text me? I've been sitting here waiting. Come on. Don't be dumb. Work smarter and not harder. Today with technology, you it's really make it easy for people so that they can come at their leisure. So you have lock boxes. Have a lock box so that, guess what? People can check in on their own. And that's all a part of your listing. So once they've already uh, paid and confirmed, you immediately send out that email automatically. It goes out there saying, here's where the key is. Here's the picture of the lock box. You put in the combination. You get out your key. You can check yourself in. Dude, you don't have to hang around. So that gets rid of that con, okay? Uh, 
Now, some people say, yeah, but you get these terrible guests and then they just destroy your place. Well, in most cases, that's your own fault. That's why the review system is in place. Now, the review system's not going to catch everybody. I could rent your place, be brand new and just totally destroy your place. It could happen, but that's why the review system is there. Don't take every single person that wants to rent. You know, you have to confirm them unless you set it to be automatic confirms. You confirm them, go look at their reviews, go and see what kind of reviews have these people gotten. And if they've gotten some bad reviews, well, just deny them, okay? And Don't Alan, get we're, bad people. we're focusing today on just uh, the Airbnb platform, but there are other platforms like um, VRBO and um, the new ones are coming out all the time. So we don't know what features uh, some of them have, but they're pretty much the same. Probably I'm the glad same. that you clarified that because while I am saying, can you make money on Airbnb? Really, it's can you make money renting out your home on, you know, for an B&B type. In other words, B&B type would be short stays. Okay. So yes, whether it be VRBO, uh, Airbnb, there's a lot of different platforms that you can actually do it. Word of mouth, lots of different ways that you can actually rent. Okay. And so we're going to kind of just talk about some of those things. All right. Now, really, that's about the biggest cons is that, you know, some people say it's a lot of work. Well, the place that I stayed at last week, young girl, uh, young Tico, okay, young Tika girl, and she, she came up with the idea. She's an entrepreneur. She's in her family's place, got this room, turned it into a BNB. and b She does all the work, doesn't take her a whole lot of time, and she absolutely loves it, and she's making some money. But hey, we're going to look at some of those details a little later on. So those are really pretty much the cons, unless you can think of some others, and, and I'll cover those as well. But let's take a look at some of the, the well, here's one other con. Some people say, well, yeah, but it's saturated, and you can't make any money. Well, there are a lot of Airbnbs anywhere in the world, not just Costa Rica, anywhere in the world. And if you do it like any McDonald's out there, guess what? Uh, when you go to McDonald's, do you go because it's a good burger? No, you go for the convenience. It's a nasty burger to be truthful about it, okay? So you can't do it like everybody else. So now, I don't want you to take what I'm about to say wrong. Obviously, the majority of the B&Bs in Costa Rica are Tico owned. I get excited when I see a Tico have an Airbnb because I know that the majority of the Ticos in Costa Rica, have they're poor. OK, you have way more money than than the majority of the Ticos. OK, when they see a gringo, you immediately are rich based on based on all the things that you have compared to them. Some a lot of Ticos don't have cars. They don't have automobiles. Now. The reason I'm saying that is when you have an Airbnb, regardless of where it's at, it's important to understand your customer and it's especially important to understand the culture if you're going to have an Airbnb in a different country. For example, Costa Rica. A Tico will, will do an Airbnb and they're just really trying to find a way to make money. And they set up an Airbnb and I'm telling you, uh, when they set up that Airbnb, it looks exactly like their house. They think they've done a wonderful job. Not saying they haven't done a wonderful job. They've done it like their house. But understand the Tico mentality, uh, and that's the reason you're coming to Costa Rica. It's very simple. So a uh, Tico will have a, a Airbnb, and hey, it's just as nice as his house. So he doesn't see anything wrong with it. But when I say it's just as nice as his house, his house may not actually have a toilet seat on the toilet. So he may or may not have a toilet seat on the toilet in his Airbnb. His bedroom, okay, he's got a little bitty thin mattress and maybe his the bed in the Airbnb has a little thin mattress, okay? Uh, there's a whole lot of things his doesn't have, but he's happy. He doesn't know any better, okay? So he's been doing this, but kudos to him that he's trying. And on Airbnb, your reviews, if you read your reviews, if you communicate with people, you can learn what they like and don't like and you can make it better and better and you can make more and more money. So I'm not saying anything bad about the Ticos, but because they're very simplistic, okay, then the Ticos that are making money have educated themselves to say, you know, the majority of my clients are going to be foreigners. And really, that's why most Ticos have an Airbnb. They're like, man, I'm going to have a gringo come here and I'm going to make a lot of money off this gringo, okay, because the gringo travelers, okay. Now, Ticos do travel, some of them, and they're going from place to place. So when you're ready to build an Airbnb, you've got to really be thinking, okay, 
you can have just a very simplistic Airbnb and you could be targeting the Ticos. And so you don't have to spend a whole lot of money because the Tico, he, well, number one, he's not really going to complain. If he's got the basics, he's pretty happy. Now, do Ticos like the finer things in life? Absolutely. Okay. And how do we know that? Well, 10 years ago when we came to Costa Rica, pretty much all of the grocery stores were very dark, very crowded. The bathrooms were horrible, right? Mm -hmm. But what did we see? We saw this new outfit coming to town. They were but called, we were in the rural, well, the yeah, southern we were in very undeveloped rural areas. Very yeah. rural areas. Remember, but, we're always talking about. Yeah, we're not talking about San Jose. San Jose. Okay. San Jose is like a totally different, totally world. different world. Okay. And the surrounding areas. That's right. So, so keep in mind that uh, you know we're not we're never talking about the San Jose and the metropolitan area up there. So we are always in these rural areas, and we found out that the majority of Costa Rica is what we're sharing with you because that's practically probably where most of you will live. Well. In that area, uh, one outfit came out and they started buying grocery stores left and right. And they called them the B and the M, B and M. OK, the M.A. is how that's pronounced. Well, they first thing they did was put in nice bathrooms. Man, they lit up the stores. They put in new aisles and they opened them up and gave them lots of room. In other words, they made it very much like you would have a grocery store in the United States. OK, you know, with plenty of registers and plenty of aisle space. OK, now what happened? Those grocery stores immediately jam packed. They were full, and the BMAs always charge way more money than the rest of the stores. Well, what did that tell you? That tells you that it doesn't matter how poor the Ticos were, they wanted to go to an environment where the experience was so much better, where they could actually use the bathroom and it was clean and it had toilet paper and it had soap and it had a toilet seat. Okay. So, you know, yeah, just, and, and those are cultural things. Those are cultural things. You're yeah. not saying it's bad, but I'm saying no matter how different the culture is, every single culture, every type of person likes a good experience. Don't you agree? Yes. Absolutely. So while Costa Rica has some different things, not saying that's bad, I'm just saying that if you do an Airbnb in Costa Rica, because if, if you're from the United States or not from Costa Rica, well, probably you understand how to make your Airbnb better than the majority of Costa Rica Airbnbs. Now, keep in mind, I say this a lot because a lot of times I might have Ticos get mad at me because some of the things I say. This channel is not for Ticos, but I can tell you, Ticos, if you're watching right now and you've got an Airbnb, I'm going to teach you how to make a fortune on your Airbnbs. Take note of what I say and then implement that in your Airbnb and you will make an absolute fortune. So Ticos, this channel's not for you, but if you're here, you're welcome to learn and make a ton of money. Yeah. And you know, the, the cultural things, uh, like you've mentioned several times about not having a toilet seat. Well, they don't see that as a bad thing. That's right. It's functional. It works. In, in fact, in some cultures to have a toilet seat, they consider that nasty. Right. You're not going to sit on something that everybody else's butt has been on. You know, so to them, it's nasty. Well, from the U.S., it, it's a cultural thing. We have toilet seats. Have and toilet if you seat. don't have a toilet seat, nobody's going to sit on that rim. Right. So, you know, a, another cultural thing um, that we find or found strange when we first got here, now we've ad adapted because we know better, is that they don't provide washcloths. That's right. Because they don't tend to use. They, most uh, tickles, I don't know any tickles that use a washcloth. Right. It's just in the in the culture, they don't. And, and Europeans are like that. And let's face it, Ticos, it's, that is not a race. It is a culture. And most of them come from Spain. Uh, some come from Italy, the ones, you know, down in San Vito area. But anyway, in Europe, that's a, a cultural thing, too. They don't use washcloths. Now, in the U.S., almost everybody uses washcloths or they use the little um, the little that spongy little spongy thing, thing. Which, use something to wash yeah, your body. But with. we use so, hey, something other hey, than. I want to know real quick. Put in the comment. If you're from the United States and you don't use something, if you only use the bar of soap like the commercials to wash yourself, I would like to know how many people actually do that. Because I grew up my whole life. We all used a rag to wash ourselves with. And then they came out with the fancy little sponges, right? Yes. Yeah, so, rope, uh, soap on a rope, you know. <laughs> and, but. Anyway, that's a that's a difference. Well, we've adapted, adjusted. 
when we go somewhere, we pack our own we washcloths. Bring our, every single time I go to Airbnb, I've only found, I think, one Airbnb that actually supplied a washcloth. I was like, wow. Right. You know. And when we're talking about our experiences, um, Al and I were talking about this earlier. We usually are going on the cheap as usual. We're talking about $75 a night and under. I'd say our average spending was like around $50, you know, something like that. So you kind of get, you know, get what you pay for. I have no idea what $100 or um, $150 night Airbnbs, you know, provide what they're like. Um, we haven't really done that, but we have stayed in a lot of Airbnbs. Every right. time we, we have to stamp somewhere. out, we have to stay um, the day before, stay in Panama, or Nicaragua, oh, and, and then traveled stay, so much. yeah, every time we um, go shopping in San Jose, we stay, you know, anytime we fly out, we've got to stay before and after. So anyway, we've okay. stayed in lots of places. Now, my point is, and of course, you know, hey, it's, it's good that you acknowledge that. But, you know, to the people we're talking to today, I highly doubt the majority of them. Now, we're going to be talking about that a little later, but what we're talking about is what you can make the most money with. Now, can you make a lot of money having a high-end Airbnb? Absolutely. But my point of the conversation today is what can you make money with quick, fast, and easy? Without and a lot of investment. Without a lot of investment. That's what we're talking about today. So um, I, got all, I got sidetracked here, but anyway, um, I was saying if you build your Airbnb and you do it like all of the Ticos, well, you probably are not going to make a lot of money, okay? Because, hey, it's the pick of the litter. And and that's where, if you're going to do it like everybody else, well, then they're just going for the cheapest place they can stay at. And most Ticos, they're non-confrontational. Even if they don't like it, they're not going to write a bad review, okay? They just won't write a review, okay? So if you... Uh, Anyway, that's for another video. Um, but my point is, that's not the kind of BNB you want because you're just not going to make hardly any money. When you want to stand out from the crowd, I'm giving you tips on how you can make money with your Airbnb if you want to make money. Okay. Obviously, why would you have an Airbnb if you didn't want to make money? Right. So, but a lot of people just don't know any better. And that's my point. Ticos, they don't know any better. They've got a nice Airbnb. They're loving it. Uh, they don't understand how to take great photos. And so they're putting up, they're, they're very proud of it. Kudos that they're trying. But if they're watching this video, they'll learn how they can make a lot of money. Okay. And that's my point. All right. So, right. so if you're doing it like the regular Ticos, I'm, I'm sorry, you're not going to make a lot of money. All right. So yeah. you want to stand out from the crowd. So, what type of Airbnbs are the easiest to manage? But first, let's talk about what, you know, there's tons of different types. Anything from, you can rent a whole castle, tree houses, camping, tiny homes, vacation homes, and simple bedrooms that's inside someone's house and you get to share the whole house. Okay. What about the, you said camping. There is glamping. There's glamping. And, and I they're, guess charging, the glamping. they're, they're charging, charging good money for so to be in a tent. To be in a tent. And um, we're like, hey, we live like that all the time. So. <laughs> but yeah, there's not a lot of investment in that. But the thing is, they're charging, but they a lot of money for them. But it's because of how they're they creating have been an set experience. up. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's in a tent, but it's a it's a nice tent and it's got the uh, fire pit and it's got the outdoor space, uh, the outdoor shower. You know, they've done it done it nice. So, you know, there's all kind of ways to do Airbnbs. And to start off really cheap, well, you could start off with something like glamping where you just have the piece of property and you just really cleaned it up, set it up really nice, and you really have hardly any money because you're setting up a glamping experience. Even a small tree house, you're making a, a real experience for people, okay? So there's a lot of different types, but Let's talk about kind of the main types that you might would be interested in and what's going to be easiest for you to make money in. OK, so in general, you know, the most popular types are like the whole house. You're going to rent the whole house. Now, the problem with that is it's a whole lot to clean. It's a whole lot to take care of. But if you have the house, it's OK. OK, but let me let's talk about some others. So a whole house, it's a lot to clean. Well, if you have a instead of the whole house renting out the whole house, you you rent out single bedrooms with the shared space, but you still have the whole house and you're kind of sharing with guests. Not the best option, but it's an okay option. And you sometimes make more money than just renting out the whole house because you might have two or three different guests at the same time, okay? Now, 
in my opinion, which one makes the most money and is the easiest to manage? Well, think of it like this. It's kind of like a basic hotel setup where you really just have a room and you have a bedroom. You got a little coffee station right there and that's perfect. It's easy to clean, easy to take care of, and you can get a lot of rentals because most people, who, you know, unless they come in with family and stuff, it's usually a single person or a couple. They just want a place to sleep, but they want an experience. So think, when you're going to have an Airbnb, if you're going to have an Airbnb, then it's all about the experience, okay? It's all about the experience. It's got to be clean. It's got to be enjoyable. In most cases, you want to have air conditioning. If you don't have air conditioning, it better be well ventilated with fans and stuff so that, because, hey, most people from the United States, Canada, they get hot really quick, really fast, okay? So you got to make sure that you have air conditioning or it's very well ventilated with fans so that you can stay cool. Now, so that's the one, in my opinion, is going to make the most money, okay? And it, and. You can make quick, easy money because it's easy to clean real fast. Within an hour, you can have that baby clean and have the next person in. So in my opinion, write that down. You want that hotel type B&B. It's got a dedicated bedroom with a dedicated bathroom, and it has its own separate entrance. In other words, there's no shared or common spaces. Now, what kind of investment is going to take to get started? Because a lot of people like, hey, um, uh, I don't have a lot of money for an Airbnb. And yes, it could cost you a lot of money to buy a house, renovate. Well, don't do that. Now you could build like a few, if you had a big enough piece of property, you could build little tiny bedroom, bathroom, you know, kitchen spaces. So it's not a whole lot. And that doesn't cost a whole lot of money, but it could still cost you anywhere five, $10,000. But here's an easy option. You want to make money and you want to start now. Great. You rent a house. Now here, it takes a little bit more work, okay? And when I say work, it just means finding it. You find the right place, you go talk to the owner, and you say, hey, I wanna rent this place. Now I'm gonna turn it into an Airbnb. So you do have to get approval because you're going to sublet it. You're gonna lease it, and what you do, is, and, and you make it worth his while. You say, look, I'm gonna rent it for three years. I'm gonna lease it for three years. So you really gotta get some skin in the game. Now people say, well, there's no way I'm gonna lease it for three years. Well, in Costa Rica, they got laws to let you out of a lease. You're gonna lose your security deposit, okay? But if for some reason you go five or six months, find out your Airbnb fails, well then you could go back to the owner and say, look, I just can't afford it anymore. I'm sorry, I know I rented it for three years, but I gotta leave. Well, worst case scenario, you've lost all of your paint, you've lost all of your labor, you've lost what you've put into it, okay? And the owner, he's gonna be happy because man, you've just made this place a whole lot nicer because you found just a, a simple Tico house or whatever, you cleaned it up, you uh, freshened it all up with nice fresh paint, and then you put in furniture. So the you know you're gonna spend maybe two or three thousand dollars to rent this. Set it up nice. So you gotta stop and think. It's all about the experience, you know. So it's gotta you know, and it doesn't have to have the most expensive furniture, the most expensive couch. But the little things matter. Okay. So when people go into the bathroom, does it have hot water? Is it a suicide shower? Don't do a suicide shower if you don't have to. Put in instant hot water with a propane tank, and that way they can adjust cold and hot, okay? Hey, whenever they go get the soap, okay? Well, get luxury soap. You know, if you have the dispenser, well, have nice dispensers, and it comes out, it's nice foam. You know, don't have just store-bought stuff up there. It's all about the experience, okay? It's all these little bitty things, and I'm going to talk more about those little bitty things as we review the last Airbnb I was in. Yes, and one thing um, that makes Costa Rica ripe for this type of situation is that they don't have, um, like subletting is, is more acceptable here, especially depending on um, the, the area. In the U.S., that's not a uh, common thing to do. Uh, renters, you know, homeowners, not landlords, do not like you to sublet. That's like a big deal to um, to get that agreement. But here in Costa Rica, it's not that difficult. Um, it just takes an arrangement of talking uh, to the, the landlord and getting all that straight. Of course, you run into the possibility, which I guess you'll cover that later, but the possibility of the, uh, the landlord then seeing that you are making money with the Airbnb, you know, with rent, the Airbnb, with the Airbnb and, then, and deciding to uh, do it themselves and and tell you they're not going to um, to lease to you anymore. So you want to consider all of that and have um, mm -hmm. you know the right 
uh, you know, taking pictures and everything of what you put in, the understanding with the landlord that if they cancel the lease for whatever reason, um, that you can take your stuff out. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, that's not a problem. I mean, you can't. No, so let's back that up. If he cancels, so you're and now. What she's saying is true. Most of the time, that's not going to happen, and here's why: you've rented a house from some poor ticos. Now, greed always sets in. They see how much money you're making. All of a sudden, they think that they can do the same thing you're going to do. But remember, you rented a empty house with four walls, no furniture, no nothing, and you had to put in a new sink, new this, new that. Well, whenever you move out, the new sink, everything comes out. They end up with the same four walls that they started with, except they've got nice, clean four walls, okay? So the odds of them doing it are pretty slim. It can happen and it does happen, but it's slim because most of the time they don't have two or $3,000 to fill it up with furniture, fill it up with a nice sink, fill it up with a nice kitchen, fill it up with cabinets and all that. So in most cases that won't happen, but I'm glad you brought that up because it can happen. Well, Greed they, always sets in. They don't realize that you need to replace it with good things um, to make it. That's right. A, a cut above the rest so that it stands out so that it gets better reviews and it gets rented um, when the others don't, you know, they just think, okay, I can do this as well. So, but it's just something to consider and realize that could happen. So uh, cover yourself because you are in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. um, there are, there's not much recourse, your word versus theirs. If they decide to say, uh, no, that was mine. Um, well, no, no. You've got pictures and everything, well, that's and that's what what's said. important, take you know, pictures uh, and before have, you go in. No, have I, mean, that understanding, I don't think that's going to be a problem writing. because, you know, you take pictures, you go in, that place is empty, okay? And most places you rent are absolutely empty. So you move out, you take everything out, and it's like Rebecca said, they're not going to fill it with premium stuff, okay? And so now, and so it's more than just filling that Airbnb right. You've got to know how to take the pictures. You've got to know how to do the listing. All of that stuff matters, but that's for a whole nother video or actually a whole course explaining how to do your title, how to do your listing, how to do it so that you will show up in the right category and so that people will actually find you. And that's the reason a lot of people don't make money with Airbnbs is that they think, I got a room. They fill it with crap. Uh, they think it's good, okay, uh, and they don't have a listing. They don't have good pictures, and so they think they're going to make money. They don't make money, and they say, it's saturated. It don't make any money. I couldn't make no money. I tried. Well, except responsibility that you didn't know what you were doing. You failed because of your own fault, okay? So all that is extremely important. So you have to understand that when someone comes to your Airbnb, if you're trying to rent to tourists, it's about the experience. Now, if you're trying to rent to workers, you're trying. I would never do that because they will tear up your place and not going to respect it. OK, so you have to understand who who is your audience. OK, and you're renting to them. So let's quickly and I'm going to take a look and we're going to review the last Airbnb that I did. And uh, hey, uh, Valerie, if you are watching this video, uh, hey. I hope that you will implement everything that I'm saying because it will turn your place into a gold mine. Okay. Yeah. And um, like Doug was saying, you know, uh, he mentioned the, the uh, Where at? right here, the cost, you know, Airbnb, the taxes and, and so forth and him having a lot of overhead. You got to consider all of that. You well, know? you know, so we're talking about what, what you're talking about is something that doesn't have a whole lot of investment to... Right. I mean, now you can have... Now, like Doug said, he counted his Airbnb. His last guest was last week. He couldn't make money, you know, because obviously he's not even in the country most of the time. So he's having to pay out someone. So he's having to pay out uh, some money for people to help manage it, I think, if I could be wrong on that. And then, of course, there is tax. There's overhead costs and all of that. And it, it's very difficult to make money if you're doing that. Now you can, but in order to make money doing that, you need to have a lot. So let me, before I even review this other one, you know, yes, you can tip the typical Airbnb, you own it and you fill it and you rent it. Okay. Lots of overhead, lots of costs, a lot of startup costs. Now, what you can do in the scenario I'm explaining to you is you can rent. Well, guess what? There's also a scenario 
where you don't even have to rent, but you could be the one managing 10 or 20 Airbnbs all around the place. And then you're getting a percentage of all the sales because you understand how to set up the listing correctly. You understand how to manage it. You understand how to uh, set up the listings. You understand how to market it and you can make money doing that. Never owning a piece of property, but helping people like Doug make a lot of money because you know how to set up the place so that it's an experience. So that's a third way to make money. So let's take a look and review this um, actual listing I was at just last week for the whole week. Okay. So if we take a look at this right here, just kind of give you an idea. Now, this Airbnb, let's take a look at it. It's a private room with an ensuite bathroom and a balcony. Now, we're going to go into it. It rents for $12,035 a night. Okay. Well, that's 24 bucks a night. And she told me, that, hey, she takes care of that whole thing by herself every once in a while if she's busy because she works at home, th that she'll hire someone to come and clean it. But she says on average, it stays busy 20 nights a month. Okay, well, 20 nights a month at $20 in, or $24 is $485. Now, I know most of you probably don't know that, but the majority of the Ticos in Costa Rica, the average Tico is making anywhere from $500 to 750 bucks a month, okay? If you're making good money, you're making about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month. Well, guess what? That is only twelve thousand to maybe um, eighteen thousand a year, and you can easily make that with an Airbnb easily. Okay, easily make twenty to thirty thousand. So uh, Valerie here is making almost what a typical Tico would make per month by having a single room that takes her about an hour to clean and very little marketing. And if she tweaks it with, if, if she takes my advice to heart and tweaks it, she can improve it and raise the price of her Airbnb. Now, did I have a five-star experience? No, I didn't. Was there something wrong? Yes. But the only thing wrong was the internet, okay? And that was a learning curve for her because she's still fairly new at doing this, okay? But I will give her a five-star review, a glowing five-star review. Why? Because she went out of her way to respond, to communicate, and she would say, well, how about this? Can we do this? She, every, she went out of her way to try to help make it right, which was very rare because in any other time, I would tell the, the host of a problem, they'd be like, Puta Vida. Buddha Vida. And she was really doing everything she could to make it better. All these different solutions. And I mean, she would offer this and offer that. And she said, well, hey, uh, well, how about a refund? I says, look, you don't really need to give me a refund. Hey, it's just an internet issue. I can work off my phone, but hey, internet's important. The reason I rented it was because your listing said you had 79 megs of internet. And uh, I don't get 79 megs of internet. It's very, very slow. It's going in and out. And it was, a look, it, it wasn't an intentional thing. She didn't check her internet speed and she just didn't have it on the right. Uh, she didn't have a, a dedicated router in that room. It would have been very easy to fix by running an ethernet cable into that room, having its own router and would have had much better internet. So it would have been an easy fix. She just didn't know how to fix it. Okay. So anyway, just taking a look at it. And so she does have a 4.93 rating. Okay. And it says here she's been running about a year. Okay. So look, very, very sweet. Uh, Tika and very, very accommodating. Let's take a quick look at some of these photos real quick just to show you because it's really important that you have good photos. Now, take a look here. It was really just a simple room. It did have just a simple bed, not the best mattress in the world. Had a really nice little welded rack here with a glass top. And this is where the towels went because the bathroom itself was too small for the towels. Okay. Well, this is the, the doors that look out to the port. So really nice French doors that open up. You could get some air in, but because you were right there at the forest during the day, some of the bugs would come in at nighttime. The bugs come in and mosquitoes tore me up the first night. Okay. And so I, I really couldn't leave the doors open, but up here they did have screens, but it wasn't a lot of ventilation. Now, there was lots of birds that really loved it right there because, look, I got to see a lot of bird uh, uh, wildlife right there. I actually saw two cans right there that was singing right on the porch. So it was really nice to be able to watch the birds, okay? She did have this little bitty ceiling fan, but the ceiling fan was way too small. She did have two really great ceiling fans on the porch, which really gave it a lot of air, which was really good, but it really would have needed one of those kind of fans inside the room and it would have made it way more pleasant, okay? Now, here's her bathroom. The bathroom was just this really narrow area, and it was so narrow, it really 
it was really only room to have a toilet against the back wall. But for whatever reason, this particular one had a toilet and a bidet. And it was really too tight of a space right there. I would take out the bidet and just put in just the toilet there. But I understand why the bidet is there. And they encourage people to use the bidet so you don't flush toilet down into the septic tank. Okay. Toilet paper. Yeah, toilet paper down into the septic tank. And, and there's a typical pedestal sink. This pedestal sink is better than most. Has a little bitty space to put stuff, but not a lot of space. Okay. Now, uh, I'm not sure why she took a picture of the shower handle. Uh, I, I'm really clueless as to why that is, okay? But hey, it, 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 she has that picture. And of course, another picture of a bird there. And then there is a picture of the outside, which a lot of people miss. And then you can't find it, okay? But uh, the point of this picture, I think, is not only to show where it's located at, but to show how safe it is. Everything is inside gates, security, so you can feel safe at your Airbnb. That is important, okay? Now, uh, and it did have its own dedicated entryway, and that dedicated entryway is lighted at night with some solar light so that you won't stumble across there. So she did have that, which was really nice, and then she did have some outside lights as well, okay? Now, she had this really nice porch, had a hammock on it, and you could just look out, and you could just enjoy the jungle, right, and enjoy all the wildlife, okay? And then, of course, she just had a picture of this decoration right here, which is, I don't know why it's not all important, but this is really kind of the bedroom setup right there. And it was really basic, but it was really all you need. Okay, so she did have this one flimsy uh, uh, rack to hang stuff. And so the bad thing here is that she didn't really have um, a place to put much clothes. So let's actually talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly on her place. Like I said, I will give her a five star because um, she went out of her way to help me. That particular place did not have a microwave and I needed a microwave. And I asked and she says, oh, yeah, I can bring a microwave down that you can use. OK, so she brought a microwave down and a little table. So she went out of her way to give me something that wasn't even there. I got everything I needed and more than her listing was. OK, so let's just real quick. Had a private entrance, which was great, okay? It had lighting and everything. Walked down the private entrance, down the steps, onto the porch. Now, looking at the porch, awesome place. It even had a hammock, okay? But there were no chairs there. And it was so nice on the porch, it would have been great to have a couple of chairs there, be sitting there just drinking some coffee early in the morning and watching the birds. Remember, it's all about the experience. So have a couple of chairs there. Tico's are thinking, why do you need a chair? Now, she did have a couple of little old stools, okay? And they weren't very comfortable, but you, it's all about the experience, okay? Nice, comfortable chairs that you can sit in to have your coffee and enjoy the birds. Now, uh, the porch was really awesome. Uh, nice place, okay? Uh, fans with lots, uh, lots of air, so it kept a lot of the bugs away. That was really great. Now, um, uh, the problem with the room was it was large, it was roomy, plenty of room, okay? But there was no chairs there. They did have two stools, but there was no chairs. And nobody wants to sit on the bed all the time. Me, I'm kind of super clean. I'm anal. I get up in the morning, I fix my bed, but I don't want to sit on the bed. I want to sit in a chair. Yeah, that's been a problem at even the nicer uh, places that we've stayed. For some reason, they just don't put a chair or anything um, for you in the room to sit for a moment you've got to put your shoes on so forth like you were saying so yeah right so that that one little thing could that make, one little thing could make, make it, a room above the majority of them right just <laughs> having and this room was spacious so there'd been plenty of room to have a couple of chairs plenty of room to have a table so that someone could set up their laptop okay that would have made it a huge huge plus which would make that room even better okay now uh, the room didn't have enough ventilation, did have that small fan, but that fan was way too small. You just really couldn't even hardly feel the air. And so having just a fan off in the corner that you could turn on and off, an oscillating fan would have made a huge difference because there wasn't air conditioning there. Really, I don't think you would have needed air conditioning in there. Would air conditioning make it better? Yes, but you would have needed to raise the cost to cover your electricity because most of the time travelers will just turn it on to the max and leave it on. So you really wouldn't have needed it there if you would have just had good ventilation. Hey, a fan would have fixed that really quick. Now, what else about the uh, room? Uh, the room um, didn't have coffee. Now, in truth, she did have instant coffee decaf. I don't consider 
instant coffee to be coffee, okay? Now, Especially in Costa Rica when they the coffee is like the pride of the country. Right. <laughs> How could you have instant coffee? Right. So you don't want to have instant coffee, right? Now, here's what's a cool thing. She did have a really nice um, electric glass hot water kettle. Now, she had that glass hot water kettle. She even supplied the instant coffee, supplied some tea so that if you weren't a coffee drinker, you could have tea. If I were her, what I would have done is I would have supplied coffee and I would have supplied one of those cute little bitty, um, it's a coffee sock rack with the coffee sock, right? And it's just made for individual coffee. That way your tea kettle could make the hot water and you would pour it over and have some of the best Costa Rican coffee right there in your room. Let's face it. That's one of the things that we bring when we go because you'd be surprised how many places we have stayed in that have a, they actually have a coffee machine maker, whatever, and they don't have coffee. You know, um, the last one that I, that I stayed at with you, it had the canister, it was empty. You could tell at one point she had coffee. So we've just gotten to where we, um, we bring, bring our own coffee or we right. run, bring a go coffee to the stock. grocery store <laughs> and get some. And um, because it's, it's just, it's just one of those things. <laughs> it's it's just very typical, and that's why you can stand out uh, above the crowd if you just implement these little facts, okay? So, hey, it would have just made a huge difference. And look, don't have just little bitty plastic coffee cups. Have a good coffee mug and a, and a cute little, co you know, because, you know, uh, Rebecca, she probably d doesn't like drinking out of this kind of coffee cup. She'd like something a little prettier. So whenever, you know, and... And you, so you want to be thinking it's all about the experience. And she had a couple of little plastic. I don't like drinking out of plastic. Okay. And I think a lot of people don't. So have a real coffee cup. Okay. That makes, that makes a huge difference. Okay. Now I'm not complaining at all because I got exactly what I expected to get. These are just pointers that would just turn her place into a gold mine. Okay. Now, um, there was really no place to put clothes. She did have that little bitty flimsy rack, okay? Now, and keep in mind, most people don't need much space because you're typically going to stay there for one night. I stayed there for a whole week. So unless you advertise long-term stays, and she does, well, then you don't need to have a lot of place for clothing. But if you advertise long-term stays, well, then have ample place to put clothes. Because I'm kind of that crazy guy. I don't want to live out of the suitcase. I get there. I unpack all my clothes. It all goes in the dresser, in the drawer. All my clothes are out, you know, in a nice place where I can quickly get them, okay, and I can utilize them. So have a place to really put your clothes. Have a couple of nightstands next to the bed because, hey, people get in that bed. They 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 want their phone right next to them. They want to charge it next to the nightstand. Yeah, or a glass of water on the nightstand. You know, there's no nightstand. And I tend to just um, leave my clothes in the suitcase. And that room and lots of rooms that we've been in, have no place to put your suitcase, like to no table set or it you know, up. like no. a luggage rack. And right. most Airbnbs don't. But if you had a chair or something, you could put that suitcase on. Right, rather than having to open it on the floor or on the or bed because people you don't want to put your dirty suitcase on the yeah. bed. You know, right. So have a place, a, a dedicated place for that uh, suitcase. And look, these are not stuff you have to have. These are all things that would make you stand out above the crowd. And okay? these are all very inexpensive fixes that will just make things, make it better. A simple thing like a hook in the we bathroom. We haven't got there yet. Okay. We're still we'll talking about we'll, the room. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know, so. That's anyway, my pet peeve. That, well, yeah, well, yeah, I agree. <laughs> when look, you know, uh, and that, that, that uh, while you don't see it in the pictures, she should have had a, had a picture. She should have a picture of the mini fridge. But that room did have a mini fridge. And of course, I called to confirm it because, hey, Nikki goes with me everywhere. It's pet friendly. And uh, I need a place to put her food and I need a microwave. So, you know, her food stays in the refrigerator. She loaned me her microwave now. And so that's pretty much most of the stuff in the room. And, and as you can see in the pictures, there wasn't a lot of art. And that's not necessary. But if you do have some art, have something nice. Like that picture shouldn't be sitting to the left of that bed. It should be in the center of the bed. But anyway, you know, all these little bitty tweaks, because the little things matter. It's yeah. about the experience. And so you're saying, you know, 
she had a mini fridge and did not have that in her listing. Didn't have it. Well, it was in the listing, but, and, and, you know, I think it was in her, uh, original pictures. And I did talk to her while I was there and, uh, she actually, so I know she'll take to heart the what I'm giving her because she updated her listing to show that she doesn't have 79 megs. She actually went to the internet place to see what she could do to fix it. So I know she'll take my my advice to heart and improve her listing. Right, an accurate listing will help your Airbnb to grow because people will um, give it five stars or four stars, whatever. Um, they won't complain as much when your listing is accurate. Uh, some people just complain no matter what. You know, Doug mentioned somebody complaining because there weren't enough clothespins. Oh my goodness. But there are the users, the abusers, the people that have learned that they can um, complain and, complain and get, and get money back. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know how you protect yourself against that other than looking at their re the reviews of well, the here's person the good that's thing. wanting to rent. You don't have to give them any money back. You can complain to... Uh, Airbnb. And if they think it's adequate, they will give you some money back. And so th the pictures are extremely, extremely important. If you have good pictures, okay, uh, and pictures of everything, you cannot have enough pictures, but make sure that you order them in some type of sequence. Like her particular pictures, it could, be, it could really be better. The birds need to be last. That doesn't need to be in the middle and it doesn't need to be between things, okay? And so you want to order your pictures appropriately. But anyway, I'm kind of getting into a rabbit trail because that's really not the point of, of, your, of this particular video uh, on how to set up your listing. It's important to have great photos, okay? So, so on to the bedroom, okay? Now the bedroom, it was narrow. It really was too small to have a toilet you mean, and a bidet, okay? Yeah, you mean bathroom. You oh, said bedroom, but you meant bathroom. I said into the toilet. You said into the, now the bedroom. Oh, okay. But you into meant bathroom. the bathroom. Okay. Uh, this is my editor here. Okay. so <laughs> Live editing. <laughs> live editing. So into the bathroom. Bathroom was too small, too narrow. And it really, that doesn't matter it being narrow um, because it wasn't crowded with the exception of where the toilet and the bidet was, okay? Uh, and so for me, I would have just taken out the bidet. Now, it's really not practical because it's a lot of work because of the plumbing and where to put it, you know. So it is what it is. But if you have a bathroom, you're going to have a B&B. &B. Don't have it crowded. People are sitting on the toilet. They want to have room to do their business, okay? So anyway, and, the, and don't ever, ever have a pedestal sink. Never have a pedestal sink. People get a pedestal sink because it's cheap, okay? Or if you have a pedestal sink, make sure that you have a shelf right beside it where people can put their things. That's another one of Rebecca's pet peeves. Yeah, because the pedestal sinks are... Um, they're cute. They're cute and, and they're uh, space-saving. But when you have stuff, you know, there's not a place to put... Most women have... a. Um, a bathroom bag, you know, that has your toiletries and, you know, your lotion and your toothpaste, to all your stuff. When it's the pedestal sink, there's no place to, to put anything. Yeah, there's barely a place for me to put my toothbrush and my deodorant, you know. Right. Now, so a shelf. Yeah. A simple shelf would resolve that would issue. Would resolve it. Now, she did have a little kind of, kind of like a shelf, kind of a cabinet thing inset in the wall, but it was right next to the shower. So it was too far away from the sink to be practical while you're brushing your teeth to reach over there and grab what you need, you know? Mm -hmm. So she did have a shelf, but it was in the wrong location. If they would have built that shelf right over there next to the sink. That would have been so much better. Yeah. I've learned to um, use a, a toiletry bag that has a strap, you know, like I'm able to hang it on the doorknob or able to hang it on something because there's seldom a, a place to set it down. Yeah. So. Now, the biggest pet peeve that Rebecca and I both have is, and this is almost every single Airbnb, you go take a shower, you come out, and there's no place to put your towel. All right. There's no hooks, a simple hook, just a hook. What do, what do, the other, what do they do? Do I they put no, their yeah. towel, their clean towel on the toilet? I don't like doing that. Yeah. So, you know, that must be a cultural thing. You know, they don't use rags to wash themselves with or the majority of them. OK, I don't, I'm not saying everyone. Okay, I haven't met one yet, but they and there's no place to put your towel. You know, in these photos, she does have a a a, a towel ring for the hand towel whenever you're washing your hands. That's great. That was above and beyond because most don't have that. OK, 
but there's no place to put your towel. So when you get out of the shower, you want to have uh, a place to put your towel, you know, especially, you know, for me, I, even if I'm staying one night, but I stay a week or I stay several days, I'm, I want a place to put my towel because I'm going to use it again and again. All right. So th those things are very, very important. OK, so yeah, uh, and there's no place to put your clean clothes, like the clothes that you're going to um, to change into. You know, or let's say you have on a jacket and so you don't want to throw your jacket. You can throw your dirty clothes on the floor. But what if you don't want to put your robe or your jacket on the floor? There's that's a, just a simple little thing. A hook costs, what, two dollars. Right. And it would make the bathroom experience a lot better. So it's really important that when you set up a B&B, &B, set up your B&B. And actually stay in it for a week before you rent it out so that as you're staying in there, you're like, well, here's my clothes. And well, crap, I'm going into the bathroom with my clothes. And you know what? I don't have no place to put my clean clothes. And I don't want to put my clean clothes on the dirty toilet, right? Even though the toilet's supposed to be clean. So you want to be thinking like a guest. It's all about the experience. Yeah. So anyway. Or, or things like um, there'll be a coffee maker, but no plug. Like where the, do you plug it the up? The plug at? is is on the other side of the room, and there's no plug behind the counter to to plug anything in. You know, it's little things like that that you want to try out. So you know, I hope this video was helpful. I'm gonna go through here and take a look at some of these questions. So uh, that's the review of where I stayed at last week. I'll be staying at a different place this week, and if her internet was working. I would stay there next week and probably the following week, okay? But these are all simple tweaks that Valerie could easily put into place and make her place even better. So Valerie, thank you so much. I did have an awesome stay there. The only problem I had was the internet, but she'll still get five stars because she did a phenomenal, phenomenal job responding, speaking with me, helping me. She just really did an awesome job. So anyway, uh, let me take a look at some of the questions right here. So. Um, uh, you know, now like Doug, Doug here, Greedy says, correct. My place has those pedestal sinks and it's horrible. Absolutely. It's just not a very good setup. And you know, Doug is right. He says, you are a considerate guest and he has a lot of people complain about the stupidest stuff. And you know, you will have abusers in everything. You just have to learn to ignore those. Okay. Now, uh, and of course he says, you know, he's going to renovate his place. And, and after he renovates it within, well, you know, he, he's going to do it again. Yeah. Now Th this is a job though. Well, this is not, we're it, saying that it doesn't, you know, this doesn't is a have way. It to be a job. Right, but it, it still takes managing. You still have to respond to people who make comments and, and all of that. It's not something that you can necessarily um, put on autopilot unless you have hired someone to handle those things for you. Right. So, wait, so I'm glad you brought that up. It doesn't have to be a job because. I would hire out locals, okay, because it's very cheap to hire out a locals, and then I would set up everything on autopilot. Now, keep in mind, it's going to be a job until you get it all tweaked, because as soon as you start your Airbnb, you're going to get feedback. You're going to get reviews, and look, you don't have to, look, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this, okay? Uh, we used to love to go to this one place. It had great pizza, owned by a gringo, okay, and uh, he was from New York, made the best pizza. But you go there and he would stay and talk with you the whole time. Now, 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 you couldn't enjoy your meal. Look, when people come to your Airbnb, you want to be available to them if they want to talk to you. But don't stay there and talk. They did not come to visit you. So don't take up all their time. But it's always important. Check on them. Try to check on them at least once a day, even if it's nothing more than sending a text. Hey, how you doing, Alan? Is everything OK? Is there anything I can get you? Did you find anything wrong? Just speak to them for a moment so you know how to tweak and make your BNB better. Okay. And that will head off some complaints. That will head off a ton of complaints. Once you get it all tweaked, then you really can get it set up on autopilot so that people can do self check in, self check out. And you have all of the, you know, as soon as they walk in, there's a little book sitting on the nightstand or on the table and they can open it up and they can see the internet password. They can see, um, what they need to do to check in and what they need to do to check out and you know all the nice places real close to go visit lots and lots of things which is a whole nother video okay but you know if you do that you can really and reviews will help you if you're nice to people you'll get great reviews okay and and you just talk to them to find out what you can do to make it better okay 
Uh, take a look at what Karen says. She says, my question is figuring out owning and having one. Is it even allowed? Yes, it is allowed. And, um, and about managing one that you don't own. So you can easily manage one that you don't own. Obviously, you know how to market yourself. You got to market yourself and you got to go. So, you know, if you if you know how to market yourself, you know how to contact people, talk to people, go talk to them. You might have to manage it for free to, to get the experience, okay? And then once you get the experience and you get reviews from people and you can prove that you can make them more money than they can make on their own, then you can start managing several of them. And so whenever you manage one, okay, you'll have to be at the site to make sure that it's all set up right, that they have the right pictures, that everything looks right, everything looks good. Once it's set up, then you can manage, uh, you get one done, do the next one. Next one done, do the next one. Then you can end up managing four, five, six, seven, and you can manage as many as you want. But then it does become a full time job because you're constantly online uh, taking questions and answers, okay? But it's an easy way to make extra money if you're just looking for a way to enjoy Costa Rica, okay, but you don't have a job. That's an easiest way to make money in my opinion, without having to learn a new skill, okay? And by managing it, um, you're the owner of your managing business and you hire, you have Ticos that um, you They're are employing. Mm -hmm. right. So that's how, um, that's how it is legal. Uh, the answering of reviews and questions and stuff like that, that's all online. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and uh, Nadia is saying, is it legal? to manage an Airbnb not being a citizen. Absolutely. So, you know, even even if you're just a tourist, you're here on a tourist visa, um, there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do. Now, well, you know, let me back up a little bit. <laughs> let me back up a little bit. Because technically, you're not allowed to work in Costa Rica. But if you're managing, you're working online, so you're allowed to work online, okay? So that could be that gray area that she was asking next, is that a gray area? Because in reality, you are supposed to be a resident in Costa Rica before you actually work, okay? But guess what? If you, let's say that you're not a resident and you have an Airbnb, okay? Well, having an Airbnb and you're not actually working it because you're paying a TICO to actually clean it, well, that's legal, okay? So I'm not telling you to do anything illegal, okay? But you're not a resident. It does take maybe a year, year and a half to become a resident. So you bought a small piece of property. It has a little cabana. You turn it into an Airbnb and you hire a Tico to clean it and all that. Now, is anyone, if you decided to do all the cleaning yourself, is anyone going to come in there and give you a hard time? Probably not. I'm not telling you to do anything illegal. Okay. Uh, but that's my point. So yeah, I think you could absolutely do that and not have any problems. Okay. So, um, and Doug addresses a little bit further down about paying taxes and mm, let's see. Uh, and so, you know, Doug was saying earlier that, hey, look, you know, once it's all set up, yes, it is OK. Obviously, when you get first get started, you got to put money into it because the last two owners wouldn't put a dime into the place. And that's typical. Uh, Ticos don't normally put money into their place. And if you rent a place, yep, you're going to have to put money into it that you that they're. Not. So, you know, in the United States, if I rent a house and I paint it, uh, normally the owner would supply the paint and I, I supply the labor. OK, in Costa Rica. I rented one place where they did pay for the paint and I and I painted the whole house and they were very thankful. However, at the end of the year, they tried to raise my rent. <laughs> Wait a minute. I made the place nice. OK, <laughs> I didn't charge you any labor. and You want to raise my rent? So it's just part yeah. of being in Costa Rica. OK, we even, we even added a little back porch. Yeah, I even so and, and ran the plumbing for the washing machine. I did all kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> I mean, I like to make my place nice, even if I'm renting. Okay, so yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah. hey. I, I wouldn't come to Costa Rica with no money and think that you're going to start an Airbnb and just be rich from it. But it is a way to make some extra income, especially if you're going to rent or even buy, um, and you don't mind doing that kind of thing. Um, buy a bigger house, you know, have extra rooms or whatever. Um, a lot of people do, um, they don't spend the whole year in Costa Rica. So then they Airbnb their home 
uh, when they're back in their, uh, you know, their home country. So that's, that's a good deal. Um, location. We didn't talk about location. Location is important. Um, well, you can't just go do an Airbnb in the middle of. Well, that's a whole nother rabbit trail, a whole nother video. Okay. And, uh, and I might do that later because while location is important, it's not important. I would not do an Airbnb right off in the middle of Trail Grande where we lived at. Right. Nobody goes there on purpose. Right. <laughs> but like San Isidro, um, a lot of tourists are coming to San Isidro and it is the uh, closest hospital to a lot of people, the closest dentist, you know, shopping. It's so a lot of um, locals, <clears throat> a lot of Ticos get an Airbnb in San Isidro to stay, to stay right. um, because they have a dentist they appointment live a long or they have to have away. a little minor surgery right. or whatever. So, yeah. So. You know, there's, you really can make an, uh, make money with an Airbnb almost anywhere. Now, is it better to be around tourist areas? Absolutely. Because you can get more money because, you know, uh, so anyway, there's, but that's a whole nother video. My point here, we've already gone another hour is, Hey, was to give you some basic excuse me, give you basic information about how you can easily make money in an Airbnb. You know, some people are saying, hey, it's, it's uh, you know, it's saturated. There's no way you can make money. Well, I don't believe that. OK, uh, because now if you do it like every single Tico out there, yes, it's saturated. OK, you need to make these small tweaks to where you really can make a gold mine. But, you know, it's, it's like Rebecca was saying, and like Doug was saying, don't count on Airbnb money to save your life, you know, unless you've already got experience doing it and you have money to put up to get that started. You really can get started with an Airbnb business with just three or four thousand dollars. OK, and, and make money. But keep in mind, uh, there's a lot to learn if you don't know about making money with an Airbnb, like your whole listing, the photographs, the listing, the SEO, which is the search engine optimization, the marketing. There's a lot into it other than just putting in a bed and a toilet and hot water and air conditioning. There's a lot more to it than that. But it is an easy way to make money if you stop and think, let me make this an experience, okay? Let me stay in it. Let me try it out. So absolutely, you can make money, all right? So anyway, that's Say just hi a thought. to my friend Pam. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Pam, so Rebecca had to have a shout out to her friend Pam. She's someone that we met at one of the relocation retreats that I hosted and uh, just wonderful, wonderful people. So, hey, good big shout out to Pam. But hey, shout out to everybody that's here. So thankful that you're here. Let me know. Put a chat in the chat. Put, you know, if you thought this was very valuable information, put a 10. If you thought it was terrible information, you would never do it, put a 1. I don't care. I gave you the best information that I have, uh, and I could give you a whole bunch more, but that would be a whole course on how you can make a lot of money with Airbnbs. You know, I've made millions upon millions of dollars uh, in my businesses. Uh, when I had a grocery store for over seven years, I made over a million dollars every single year in my grocery store. Why is that? Because I understand people. I understand the psychological value of how to to sell a product and how people will spend money so that they will buy the product I have. And so it's really just understanding people and the different personalities of people. So I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I have a lot of experience being an entrepreneur. I've made a lot of money. And if you're not making money with your Airbnb, it's probably a mistake you're making. Okay. And so you can always improve yourself. And I'm not saying I'm perfect because I know I can always improve myself. And I'm always, always looking for ways on how I can become better and better. So it, it, it make, you know, I'm just stoked every time I see a Tico put up a, an Airbnb because they're trying to find a way to get out of the poor life that they're in. And if they watch this video, they most definitely can make a lot of money with their Airbnb if they'll implement those few things. So, hey, uh, let me know. Uh, put a comment in there. Did you enjoy it? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Uh, we greatly, greatly appreciate you being here for our lives. And, and you know, we enjoy your feedback, okay? We want to get your feedback and find out, you know, what did you think about it? So Brady says he gives us a great big old 10. You know, take a look at... Uh, uh, Lewis there says, excellence, give us more. Karen says, hey, 10, uh, let's get some more, exp 
expertise on Airbnbs again in the future sometime. So, hey, we greatly appreciate all of you. And like Pamela, you know, you no matter what business you're in, you know, Pamela says, hey, she, I'm making a million dollars every year with my store. She lost a million farming. <laughs> Well, and it it's does a happen. different industry, that's yeah. for sure. Well, you know, farming a... business, it can be tough, tough, tough. Because, I mean, you can't predict the weather. You don't know what's going to, the economy is going to happen. All kind of stuff. So, hey, I greatly do appreciate all of you. Hey, it's been over an hour. I greatly appreciate you. Can't wait till next week. Wow, we're going to, and a look at thumbnails going to be up soon. I think next week we're going to be talking about I how forgot. do you know? <laughs> How do you know? How do you know when you found your slice of paradise? Okay. That's what we'll be talking about next week. How do you know when you found your slice of paradise? Where is the perfect place? We'll be talking about that next week. All right, folks. Y'all have a great night.